to my channel I'm Anna and this is you got me in stitches I'm coming in at you today with one new look make and talk through all the process of constructing it the pattern that I am talking about is new look 6446 I made the view there that the model is wearing and of course it's view C the pattern I purchased second hand and the tissue paper had been cut by the previous owner. I did however have to tidy up the tissue paper because the previous cutting methods yeah, definitely raised an eyebrow so I had to go around all the cutting lines and make sure it had a really good tidy up. The owner of 6446 pattern had cut a straight size 14 and again I tidied everything up and because there was quite a few mixed reviews about this pattern I thought this time I'd actually do a muck up first. On this muck up because the previous owner had cut a straight 14 I actually kept with that size. I used just this regular 100% Carlin fabric that you guys have previously seen in one of my thrifted hauls and yeah it was so inexpensive and originally it was just a bed sheet. Righto let's get into the adjustments that I had to make. Now because I am tall I pretty much all the time have to make an adjustment to the crotch area and on this I extended it about three quarters inch and just kind of guess that to start with. The other adjustment is across the bodies and the bend. So I pinched in a little bit of fabric there because across the front it was just gaping a little bit and therefore it doesn't have as good a fit when it does that. Now when I came to placing the tissue paper on the fabric that I decided to use which you can see just there behind me because the front bodice has to be cut on the fold it's not as simple as then taking this out it would have been had I had run the adjustment all the way down that would have been easy you could have then retraced that out and then omitted the measurement that you needed but this is more of a triangular and it's only about three, four inches down. I did not want to change the measurement around the lower diaphragm area and then going into the tummy area because that was okay. I am sure that there is a way to make an adjustment there on the middle of the front bodies. But what I decided to do was actually take a little bit off the arm side bodies and just a little bit there on the band and that did work and I think it worked because I wasn't taking too much off I think if it had been a larger measurement that I was emitting there then I think that would have altered the pattern a bit too much but yeah it worked I also added an inch to each of the legs and in the end in the finished garment I actually did not need to do that because in the end I did not do a surge draw edge and then double fold I still did the surge edge but I decided to opt for something a little bit different. The only other thing is the bend that goes across the top there and then attaches to the front bodice. And this area here would be the arm side. It just ever so slightly doesn't quite match. Now, I don't know kind of what went on there, but yeah, anyway, I rounded the arm side off so then you didn't get this kind of jiggity bitting 
teenage athlete very kindly also insert a couple of stills of me wearing the muck up so then you can see the kind of before Right, right, let's actually now talk about the final garment. The fabric that I decided to go with is a thrifted fabric and also I would insert, to know just thing will, insert some other little footage of me cutting out and laying the tissue paper down and just quickly talking about the fabric content. But it's a really comfortable fabric to wear and it's kind of a mid-weight and it does have quite a good bit of drape to it. Righto, so I have 6446 mock-up laid out on the conservatory floor. I have made a couple of tweaks and it is the body and band front there. I need to knit that in about an inch in total. And the straps are okay, but they're easy to rectify. The darts and everything are all okay. And just coming down here to the crotch, I've just made a little note that I just need to lengthen it a smidge. And pretty much everything is okay. And I'll see how I get on with the real fabric. This is the fabric that I have decided to use. And this fabric I thrifted a little while ago. Here's a little bit of texture throughout so these little slabs they are absolutely everywhere so it gives a little bit of extra interest it is I would say a midweight but it is really quite drapey but has a little bit of structure at the same time this fabric has absolutely no stretch apart from a little bit on the bias also both sides look pretty identical and the little trick that I decipher is when you look at the tinder hooks which would have produced these holes along the silfage if they are raised and you can see that they are raised then I would decide that I want to use that as the correct side found a little bit of leftover fabric and on here you can see that the hooks, when they penetrate through the fabric there, on that side they are a little bit more raised than the underside. Now obviously on this fabric, it's obvious to decide which is the correct side and which is the wrong side. But I guess if you have fabric like this one, you are going to have to decide which is going to be the right side or the wrong side. Now, if those little holes are not really raised enough and they are very flat both sides, then you decide which side of the fabric that you want as your right side. And then do the little trick that I do and put a safety pin in. And then that way pins, regular pins, don't slip out. Chalk doesn't rub off but also if it's fabric that it's okay to mark within the seam allowance you will also realise which is your right side as opposed to the wrong side because of the markings you have made Right, well, so I have cut everything out oh, my back is absolutely ouch putting it politely made a few tweaks and hopefully when I sew this all up the tweaks will be good. I just have this amount of fabric left. So here it is. And it's coming up a little slightly not quite true to colour. It is actually a bit more red. And straight away you can see I bias bound the entire bodies. I say, what else did I do? Now what is actually missing? It is the band. So because of that 
slight sort of jiggly wiggly bit when the band was attached to the body and around the arm site area I actually decided to omit the band completely and integrate it so it's one body piece obviously I did the calculations because you would get the raw edges so I omitted those and made the tweaks that I needed to so the body's front would actually fit a little bit more snug and have a better shape around that area and it has come out really well. All the bias binding was hand stitched apart from initially I stitched it to the fabric on the machine and then went around all in the inside with hand stitches. The fabric itself was really good to work with, good in the sense of sewing it up and also pressing it, which is always a bonus. What I will do now for you guys is lay this garment out and just talk through and show you guys some of the features that this pattern has. Starting off with the straps, I like these straps because they're a couple inches wide and therefore they cover the bra straps, which is really good. Then following down, the bias binding that I decided to add all the way around the body, front and back. The pattern does not call for that, that is just my choice. It's a set in bias binding and I decided also to do it in a contrast and I think the two colours work really well. Also you can see that I omitted the band so I integrated the band into the bodies and I think that worked pretty well. Following down it has two front darts there. They are the darts that are quite wide that you cut in the middle and then obviously bring the raw edges together. Following down from that the pants have two details there of pleats so one there and one there. The pants also have pockets, we love a pocket don't we, in there, and they're really deep pockets, now the matching on here it's just oh about a mil out, and that one's okay, so I'm pretty pleased with it, but I think from a distance I don't think you can really tell. Following down from the waist. See the pants there and this is what I was talking about regarding the, the towel so I decided in the end, excuse the kitty, to add bias binding and because I added an inch in length therefore when I surged the ends I then did not omit the inch so these are a little bit longer than what they would have been. So I added on the binding there and also did hand stitching coming over to the other one. See there? I think I did okay there. Also it is surged throughout and I didn't have matching thread so I opted for navy blue. I have now flipped it over so you can see the reverse and so the binding goes all the way around the back. Hello bunny. I don't know, these animal photo bombers, what do they think they are? Righto, zipper. I used a vintage zipper that is, oh my goodness, a story. So when I completely finished this garment, went to put it on, zippered the back up, got halfway and Disaster. I will cut to the short footage of that. Righto, so I am still sewing in the garden and I have installed so far the zippy here and mixed it okay. Yeah, a bit of a contrast going on there. Got to finish all this off. I have literally just finished the outfit, went to put it on, zipper it up, and this happened. 
I'm so upset. I actually installed that zipper first time really well and even my lines matched up. Sometimes I just wonder why I bother. So I better introduce myself to the quick unpeak. Right, I so that bleeping zipper has now been uninstalled. I felt like snipping it up into thousands of pieces and recycling it for stuffing. What's ticked me off a little bit is the bias binding there. It's just starting to fray. I just hope with the hand stitches that I can hide that. I got me a vintage zipper here. So now I will install this and hopefully it will come out as good as the other one before the other one decided, for whatever reason, that it wanted to be faulty. Well, I'm seeking zipper installed, first time. And it's just ever so slightly off by about a mil. I think that's gonna be okay. I'm not going to reinstall it to fit it. All I need to do now is hand stitch the binding there. So this is a vintage zipper like I just said and a little bit more stronger than the brand new one obviously and I think I did okay there with matching the lines and then following down there. Little bit of a, a bump but I think I can get away with it. Also the bodies has two back darts and then I as you can see slightly off there on the pants with the back darts and yeah a couple mil out a little bit on those two unfortunately but again from a distance unless you're that close I don't think it matters too much but to me it does a little bit, being a bit of a perfectionist I guess. I have flipped it inside out for you guys so then you can see the interior. There are the two front body studs there. Following down there are the two front pockets. And you can see that I have searched throughout. Flipped it over for you guys so then you can see the back. So all the insides, so there are the back body starts, obviously the zipper and the pants back darts. So just to recap the changes, the sizing of the bodies I decided with a 12, I may even be able to bring it in a smidge more. The waist is a 10 and 12 for the hips. Also with the changes I'm happy that I incorporated the body band into the bodies so it's all one piece. I lowered that crotch line a three quarter inch and the next one I think I need to change that to an inch as it's still just a tiny little bit snug there and don't want to go too far past the inch or otherwise I will get a seggy hiney or tushy and we don't want that do we? Nah, it's ugly enough as this is. <laughs> anyway, I'm happy that I played around and used the bias binding. I thought that was a great feature. And if I make another one, I probably will still incorporate the one piece bodies instead of a separate band and the bodies together. The fitting overall with the tweaks, I am happy with. And I know there is a lot of kind of deliberation and a few sort of debates with this pattern. I think for me because I had had a few sort of issues with the pattern that's why I jumped in and made a mock-up and then I could do the tweaks that I would need to do anyway regardless but obviously now I have made it up in the mock-up and the real thing I'm happy with the tweaks that I have made. I may or may not add an inch to both the legs but again, I could easily just fold this as a double fold 
and just put pins in and see where the length comes on my leg. I may play around with the arm side. I may raise it just a little bit on the next one. I'm not entirely sure. In our side, I may swap out the zipper from the back and then style it along the side. Now I know it hits pockets and there would be quite a bit of work there. And I know there's a little bit of contention with side zippers. And I don't mind side zippers as long as they go all the way up to the arm side and don't stop short of the arm side because then you still feel a little bit locked in with it. I guess you could actually play around with the zipper and maybe hmm, put it in the front. I don't know. I know it perhaps wouldn't look right, but I like to kind of be a bit of a rebel and play around and you know see what you can do with things the garden is filled with baby fledglings they are so cute and i have one to my left and it keeps cheeping at me so so cute anyway back to the pattern the pattern you can also make a dress two different lengths and also different lengths so if i remind you again you can have the pants just past the knee there even though they come a little bit longer on me or full length pants full length dress shorter dress and yeah, I think I'd give the dress a go. Probably knee length, maybe a smidge above the knee. I don't know, see how I get on with that. And I think I'd like to give these a go in the full length pants as well. But it, I guess you could also do the shorts length as well, but no, no, not for me. Also, the other thing that I did not do is the tie belt with it. And I was thinking of maybe just using one of my little tie belts that I have instead of actually making well, I couldn't make it up now anyway I don't know if I'd actually have enough length of fabric if I put two pieces of fabric together I'd have to make sure that the seam was at the side but yes I did not make the tie belt I didn't think it was really necessary and if I did want a belt then I would use one that I already own I think I know a few people have had a few issues with this pattern but my final thoughts on this is it's a really good pattern after you make all the tweaks, which for the most part we would have to make tweaks anyway because no pattern really is kind of conformed to our bodies and also we have preferences. Also I made changes anyway that was nothing to do with the pattern like with the bias binding and maybe the next one that I decide to make I might decide to do two body pieces front and back and incorporate that way as opposed to facings. You could use a facing but I'm a bit too mind about the facing, especially if they don't lie flat and or they flip out a little bit or stretch. So I think the bias binding for this first make was a good idea. And I think with the contrast, it just gives it a little bit of extra interest. And especially where I incorporated that on the pants bottoms as well, just to kind of give it a little bit of balance there. I also, this little baby bird up there, baby blackbird fledgling. Anyway. I like the fact that it has good pockets, good in the sense that they are deep. I do like a pocket to be fair and when I make clothes and they don't have pockets I tend to incorporate them or sometimes I leave them out and then I'm always kind of looking for my hands for going into pockets that are not there and I do find that a little bit irritating but yeah so there are mixed reviews about this pattern, a little bit of contention there and things like that. But I think overall, once you've made the tweaks and you've got that fit right, I think it's a really lovely pattern. I think this pattern is actually quite versatile. Versatile in the sense that you could play around quite a lot with it. There's quite a few options. You know, be a little bit adventurous with different fabrics, perhaps change the zipper up, maybe even incorporate ties or puppers, snips, things like that, buttons, and yeah, again, maybe even a button down front could be a possibility, anything like that. Again, you can play around with the leg length, and also I'm thinking maybe if I made another one with the length that I have chosen there, maybe a scalloped edge would be quite pretty. Again, what do you think on that? Righto guys, so that is it. The top that I'm wearing is another New Look pattern, 6230, and it's a stretch jersey fabric, and the fabric you could find at So Jessily online. Finish off the video with stills and a quick video of the finished garment, 
and just for me to say thank you always for watching stopping by and taking the time to watch my video like and comment and things like that i hope that you have a really good week and there might be a midweek video i'm not too sure yet if not i will see you guys all being well next sunday take care everybody and thank you so much for watching